Hello and welcome to my very messy desk. Um, I wanted to make this video to talk to you about this uh, thing here, which is a rocketry fin jig. Basically, it allows you to perfectly, absolutely perfectly put uh, fins onto rocket uh, body tubes um, so that they're always on the centre line of the tube and they're always coming off um, uh, vertically off the centre line. It's a tool that I built in uh, 2018. I've actually rebuilt it slightly recently um, to make it a little bit easier for other people to assemble. And I'm talking about this because I'm going to put a short kit which is just going to include the complicated uh, laser cut wooden parts or MDF parts um up on my tindy store because everything else you should be able to find locally um yeah so i made the original of this um in 2018 and i've used it all the time um and so uh, what i thought i'd do is first i'll show you quickly uh kind of how it works and then we'll talk a little bit about how um you will build uh you can build your own from the uh short kit that i'm gonna uh, provide so if i flip it over you can see that it's got these um laser cut wooden uh sections um that i've got kind of feet on and they come down to these kind of v-shaped points here uh there's some threaded bar kind of holding it all together and when you when you put it together you make sure that these are nice and parallel so basically the points in the center of these triangles all kind of align really nicely um, and then there's two other sets of holes on each uh, of these uh, panels two up here and two lower ones and through those you can thread some something like this has just got a rubber band in it which is actually this end is just held in with friction and um, this end <clears throat> this is the method i prefer i've got some uh, a little bit of three millimeter shot cord and then one of these little toggles that i found off an old coat but yeah there's numerous ways of doing that and the idea then is that you can put a tube a rocket tube through these and um, this is a BT-50, but as you can see, this is 80 millimetres wide, so this can hold like quite a big tube. And the idea is, is that with this little bit of friction, obviously you don't want too much, you don't want to crush it, this tube is now held directly on the centre line of all these panels. So if we move these metal bits out of the way, you can see uh, from above... The end two panels have got these uh, sort of other rails on and into the, each one there is a notch. And then the metal um, uh, angle sort of brackets can, can slide in and out on these bits. So what you do, so you've got your body tube in, what you do is you get your fin. Um, this is all just, just kind of made up. And what you do is you place your fin into this notch here now it doesn't matter if you just kind of touch it in at the tip if you it doesn't have the pit fin doesn't have to be in the correct position uh, in the first instance so you can just kind of slide it in there make sure that it's in the middle of that notch and then gently pull these together and you can either hold it or you can use a little clip to kind of hold that in place um you, you can use a peg you can use like uh these you know uh, what do they call them binder clips um these are quite good these are little clips that are, are for uh sewing instead of pinning hems um or anything really any sort of clip you can use it in place or you can kind of just hold it at this point so you'll notice that that, that fin is now obviously on the center line but the back of this can wobble around so what you do next is you either get another fin or you get a piece of material that's the same as your fin. So this is just a bit of scrap balsa for, uh, that's the same as this balsa would fin. If my fin was kind of painted or treated or something already, um, it's important that you put you use something that's exactly the same width as your fin to uh, sort out the other end. So yeah, that's the next point, is I'm going to pop this bit in this end, and I'm going to slide that into the centre of the notch in that end. Now I'm going to put a little clip in the middle. And now that is kind of definitely, you might need to fiddle about a little bit, but that's definitely kind of centred around the material um, and aligned with the, with the centre of the body tube. So what you can do now is you can just nip up these little um, bolts, uh, nuts and bolts a little bit, and then basically your jig is set. Now, in reality, if I was working on a model, I would probably, it's hard to do this with a big camera in front of me as well, but I would probably take a lot more time, make sure that everything's centered nicely, and make sure that everything's staying in position, and make sure that these are kind of done up correctly. And, you know, because the, the, the more uh, sort of accurately that you set this up, 
and the more you take your time, the better results you're going to get on the rocket. But once it's kind of set up and these are tightened up, you kind of don't have to reset it now. You can work on this rocket um, without kind of resetting the jig. So actually, um, if, if you built one of these and you were using it for the first time, I would say before you use it for the first time, is just practice setting it up a few different times because you'll find your own little tips and sort of ways to do it. So now because I've tightened the nuts and bolts up, I can actually remove the stock if I wanted to, um, but I won't for now. But what this basically allows you to do now is I can now slide this fin up and down through here I can place a little bit of glue on the edge um, and then I can move it into position and I can place it um, onto the tube. And that will be exactly on the uh, centre line of the tube and it will be held exactly as vertical. What I tend to do is a little sneaky, uh, well, certainly if it was bolted wood onto a ST tube, is I'd put PVA glue for the most of it and maybe a couple of dabs of super glue. And then the super glue goes off really, really quickly. And then you can kind of slide it out, index it round to your next mark where you want to put the next fin and, and do the next one. So yeah, um, it, it works really, really, really well. One thing of note um, is... You'll notice that this fin is actually pretty much the when it's on the tube, it's pretty much the height of the thing. One modification of it, well, one thing I've sometimes done is actually use the other end to put fins on because then you can actually have part of the fin sticking out of the end so you can hold on to it. The other modification I'm going to do, but I have never get around to, and I always, I always think, oh, I should do that, is I'm actually going to cut this section down so that the vertical section on this bit is maybe only a few millimetres high. And then um, I can put like really, really tiny fins too, but still have some fins sticking out the top to kind of use. Okay, so that's how it works. Oh, they'll work with really, really fat thins, fins, fat thins, that's hard to say. And of course, I said before, you can go up to like an 80 mil tube. In fact, if you wanted to build a massive like sort of six inch rocket, what you could do is cut these off here um, at the end of the, um, the uh, triangle. And then actually you could fit it onto a tube that's bigger than itself with a band going all the way around. And of course, for bigger tubes, you want to use the lower holes and some bigger kind of bits of shock cord. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to kind of loosen this off and, and get rid of the stuff so that we can uh, talk about kind of putting one together. Yeah, so um, I'm I'm going to sell a short kit, which is just the, the wooden bits. And the reason for that is, is it's, it's just a faff posting bits of metal. It would add a lot to the weight. It would... Um, you know, and actually all the metal work is really, really common stuff. And actually the metal work, you don't have to be as accurate as you do uh, with the panels. So you're basically going to get three of these and you're going to get a couple of these sections. One thing that I've changed from my original design with the original design worked fine. But because I'd made these sections kind of smaller than the big one, I had to line up these notches and, and try and make that really accurate. And so I had to kind of glue it in position and kind of, you know, and, and there was sort of opportunity for it, for it to go wrong. So what I've done in the redesign is made it out of slightly chunkier MDF material. And then um, this is the full width. So if you glue uh, your ones of these to and make sure that it's flush along the top and flush at either end, then you know that this is going to align really, really well. So, yeah, so you'll get uh, three, of, three of those two of these uh, to make up a set of panels like this. Why three panels? Well, if you're doing something really small, like a, I've, I've been making some really small BT, oh, that's the point, it will go down to, it will hold a BT5, you know, a 13 millimeter um, tube in here. So if you're making something out of BT5, it might actually, the sustainer might only be kind of this long. So having a sort of panel that you can put anywhere in the, in the mid run, of your your uh, system um is is uh, good because it means you can work on short stuff but it also means um that you've just got a bit more kind of inherent stability in the uh, in the device so uh, to build it you're gonna need some m5 uh, threaded bar and it doesn't actually matter kind of how long you make it but i would suggest this which is about i think it's about 18 centimeters from here to here 
18, 20 centimeters, I think is kind of perfect because you can, you can leave it on a desk. It balances nicely. It's not massive. Um, yeah, it, um, it, it fits a really broad range. I've done like, you know, meter and a half long sort of, uh, 70, 76 millimeter kind of, uh, diameter, uh, rockets on this. I've done like tiny kind of BT5, like little, little experimental things. So, um, it's a, it's a really good size. So yeah, so you're going to need some M5 studded bar. Um, you can either buy it in short lengths, or I just bought a meter <coughs> from like my local hardware store, or certainly like big chain stores like you know uh, B and Q or whatever you have locally uh, will will tend to sell M5 uh, all thread. Um, so you can chop it into length with a hacksaw, or you might find that you can buy some like 20 centimeter um, M5 threaded rods already cut to length. Um, uh, then you'll need, uh, how many will you need? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 24 uh, M4, uh, uh, M5 um, nuts. Um, I've used some washers on mine. I'm not convinced that you need uh, washers uh, completely, but, you know, um, they're, they're nice to put on. So uh, you, you wouldn't, don't put the metal on first. You get the two panels glued up and then kind of uh, put this together. It's important to make sure that everything, these are parallel to each other. If you get any sort of angle in it, obviously that's gonna change the way that the tube sits. So making that as, as uh, good as possible. I mean, one way you can do it is just by simply measuring at all points that the, the, uh, the, the things are kind of equidistant. Um, the simpler way to do it, if you can find something that's, that's the size that you want, is find something that's like consistent and uh, square and then use it as a guide. So you, you know, you place one panel uh, at the back and then you push your other panel up to it. Um, I, I forget what I've used on this, maybe a end of a sort of T-square or something on this section and a smaller object here. But yeah, basically you want to make those as parallel as you can. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, so then to do these, the, all this is is like, um, it's probably sold as one inch um, angled uh, aluminium. It's, um, it's a couple of millimeters thick, so then maybe actually it's 15 mil. I don't know, how, what is that? Oh, it's 20, 20 mil, so 20 millimeter um, uh, per side um, aluminium angle. Um, again, uh, local hardware store stuff. Um, lots of people think, oh, it's going to be really hard to, you, to, to make these, but actually you can chop these uh, pretty easily with a hacksaw, and it doesn't matter, apart from you don't really want any sharp bits where you're going to cut yourself. doesn't matter. These are not massively neatly cut. These are just kind of hacked to length. Um, doesn't matter if one is slightly longer than the other. Um, really, really isn't isn't fussy about that at all. The important thing is that you've got these two nice flat sides that come together. Um, so what you're going to do is once you've built your thing, you'll then have this length that you can work out. So you can flip this over and place it on your metal bars and make some marks. Um, and then drill some holes to receive. These are M4 bolts um, that are about 15 millimetres uh, long so yeah so um <clears throat> the thing to when people get really like oh i'm gonna have to drill really accurately it doesn't actually matter if if you if you drilled this hole slightly wrong and you had to elongate it like this way a little bit to make it actually fit onto your um onto your rails again it doesn't actually matter it just needs to be held so that it slides in so that it self centers when you pull them both together onto that central thing so yeah don't get too hung up the real bit that, that you have to be accurate about is getting these nice and parallel and of course it's off to a good start because the laser cut um, design is really really accurate and uh, consistent so yeah, um, there we go. So yeah, I'm uh, just to repeat, I'll be selling them uh, over on my Tindy store as three of these, two of these. So you need a bit of glue, some threaded bar, some nuts and washers, uh, some M4 bolts, and this uh, 20 mil or so angle metal. Doesn't matter what it's made out of, particularly so long as it's firm. So I wouldn't use like a flexible plastic, for example. Um, but if you had a stiff plastic, that would work really well. And um, the other thing I did on my original was I actually gave this a little coat of varnish. And I imagine um, I'm going to uh, take this to bits and I'm going to paint these. Um, the only reason is it doesn't really need painting. Um, apart from, um, obviously, as you're messing about with glue, you can quite often might get a bit of glue on your jig. And so if it's got a bit of varnish on, you can kind of, or paint on, you can kind of wipe it clean of glue quite easily. And you're not going to get kind of little lumps and bumps on it. So, yeah, there we go. 
Oh, honestly, use these since uh, 2018 for almost all my rocket builds. It's one of the best tools I've built by far. And so, yeah, really, really uh, pleased to kind of share that with you. And, uh, oh, yeah, and, of course, the other thing you'll need is either some rubber bands or, as I say, this is quite a nice solution. If you can find some bits of... Uh, bits of um, thin um, uh, shock cord and uh, a couple of these, which I don't know what they're called really, but these little kind of cinch toggles that you get on jackets, which whenever I throw anything away that has those, I tend to cut those off and keep these because they're handy little things. But yeah, there we go. Um, thank you very much for watching and uh, check out the Tindy uh, uh, link to the store for the kits uh, below. Okay, ta-ta!